Ohm's law describes the mathematical relationship between electric current, resistance, and voltage. These fundamental electrical quantities and their relationship comes up a lot in electronics and it's an important part of the technician class ham radio license test. Electricity is unlike anything you've ever seen, held, or heard before. To me, that's part of what makes it so cool and interesting. Um, but it means that any analogy or metaphor used to describe it necessarily falls short and could even lead you astray. So I'm going to do something I haven't seen done before. I'm going to introduce the fundamental units of electricity without telling you that electricity is something it's not. Now, the concepts will probably feel a little foreign to you uh, because they're new and different. And that's okay. I believe this approach will put you on good footing to really understand and internalize these concepts. So electric current is a flow of electric charge past a point in a circuit over time. I just said a lot of words you may or may not be familiar with, so let me break that down just a little. Electric charge is the stuff that makes your hair stand on end on a dry day. Um, it can also be made to store or carry um, potential energy to do useful work in electric circuits. The smallest unit of electric charge is called the elementary charge. This is a very, very tiny amount of charge. So we usually talk about charge in a unit called the coulomb. A coulomb of charge is about six million trillion elementary charges. It's a much handier unit to talk about a bunch of tiny elementary charges. So electric current is the flow of electric charge past a point in a circuit. Now, what's an electric circuit? It's a conductive path in which electric charge can move. And as the word circuit implies, it goes and comes back around to its starting point. In a circuit, we don't see charge flowing out from here and piling up over there. The electrical sockets in your home, they don't drip or leak electricity or get backed up. Those are problems for plumbers, not electricians. Charge likes to stay in balance, so we give it away to get back where it came from. To make it go around a circuit, we give it a push. More on that in a moment. But that's a little bit about charge and a little bit about circuits. So current is the flow of charge past a point in a circuit over time. How do we quantify current? We use a unit called the ampere, or amp for short. And one ampere of current is one coulomb of electric charge per second flowing past a point in the circuit. Now, we talked about giving electric charge a push to get it to flow around a circuit. And that push is called electromotive force, or EMF for short. Well, there are different physical effects that can provide this force to make charge move around a circuit, that is to make current flow. Um, for example, electrical batteries rely on a certain type of chemical reaction to apply this force. Uh, whereas electrical generators rely on magnetic induction to produce the same electromotive force. But why is this force important? Or more specifically, why is the amount of this force important? You might imagine that a small current flowing in a circuit can do a small amount of work and that a larger current can do more work. That's part of the story. But consider that even a rather large current might not be able to do very much work if it's an easily opposed current with very little force behind it. On the other hand, 
a small current might be able to do a lot of work if it's vigorous and difficult to oppose because of a large force behind it. The key is that it doesn't just matter how much charge there is, but also how much potential energy is in each bit of charge. A potential energy is stored energy that has the potential to do work. A couple examples of mechanical potential energy that you might be familiar with would be, for example, lifting a heavy weight to a high place so it can do work as it comes back down, um, or winding a spring so that it can do work as it unwinds again. Maybe like in a watch or a clock, perhaps. The amount of potential energy ready to do work in each little bit of electric charge depends on the amount of electromotive force pushing it. So charge with more force behind it has more potential energy than the same amount of charge with less force behind it. Charge moving around a circuit will have different amounts of potential energy at different points in the circuit. So for example, just on its way out of a battery, after getting a hearty push from a chemical reaction, electric charge might have quite a bit of potential energy ready to do work. Then, after passing through a light bulb and giving up some of that energy to do the useful work of illuminating the bulb, the charge will have less potential energy. Uh, we call this difference in potential energy at different points in a circuit potential difference. Electromotive force and potential difference are two different ways to think and talk about the same fundamental quantity. We measure this quantity in units called volts. And you'll often hear it called voltage rather than by the more evocative terms of electromotive force or potential difference. Well, we talked about what an ampere is, the unit of electric current. So, what's a volt? Uh, this won't be on the test, but a volt is the amount of electromotive force that must be applied to a coulomb of charge to increase its potential energy by one joule, which is a unit of measurement for energy. Uh, to give you a sense of how much that is, a joule is about the amount of energy needed to lift a small glass of water from the table to your mouth. Kind of a handy, everyday amount of energy. The current flowing in an electric circuit faces opposition. The conductive materials it flows in, like, say, electrical wire, provide a small amount of opposition. Now, some elements of a circuit, like the light bulb we used in as an example earlier, provide more opposition and the energy lost to this opposition is often converted to heat and wasted. So, for example, if you've ever touched um, an electric cord that a, a lot of current's flowing through or that little black box on your laptop cord, um, you've probably felt the warmth of this lost energy. Uh, in other cases, it is converted to another type of energy and made to do useful work, as in motors or lights. We call the amount of opposition to the flow of current resistance, and we measure it in ohms. So, what's an ohm? Suppose we have a battery, and we'll draw it like this, and that can provide an electromotive force of one volt. And suppose we connect it to a light bulb, which we'll draw like this, and, and that has a resistance of one ohm. An electromotive force of one volt will be sufficient to cause one ampere of current to flow through the resistance of one ohm. Another way to look at it is that one ampere of current flowing through a resistance of one ohm results in a potential difference of one volt. See, as the bits of electric charge pass through the battery and get a push from the chemical reaction within it, 
they pick up a volt of potential energy. So the potential difference between the point where the charge enters the battery and where it comes out is plus one volt. Now as the little bits of charge pass through the resistance of the light bulb, they give up one volt of energy. So the potential difference between the point where the charge enters the light bulb and where it leaves is minus one volt. This brings us to Ohm's law, which states that voltage equals current times resistance. We usually write voltage as V, but on the technician class ham radio test, they talk about it as electromotive force and write it as E. So we'll do that here. Uh, current we write as I and resistance as R. So we get the equation E equals I times R. And we can rearrange this equation to solve for any of the three quantities if we know the other two. And I like to use a visual tool to perform this rearrangement. So let's put E on top here, then I and R on the bottom. Now let's say we want to solve for current. We'll cover up I and we're left with E over R or E divided by R. Let's solve for resistance. Uh, cover up R, and we have E over I, or E divided by I. And finally, let's solve for electromotive force, or voltage. Cover up E, we have I times R. Uh, <clears throat> that's Ohm's law. So if you came to this video because you're studying for the Technician Class Amateur Radio License Exam, I'd like to take a moment to recommend that you treat yourself to an online study course that my wife and I put together. It's packed with helpful <laughs> packed with helpful explanations like the one in this video. And it uses the actual question pool from the test to help you study. It's the fast, effective, guaranteed way to earn your license. Check it out at skillman.com. Skillman, like that. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If this is the kind of thing you're into, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or you'd just like to chat and hang out, uh, that's what the comments section down below is for.